Greetings, everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your captain, and my name is Rye. Yeah, that doesn't sound quite as good as my normal intro. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host, Captain Rye, and that uh, first intro was a request by one of my subscribers. But I think I'm going to stick to my regular one. Today, I've got another fantastic Fletcher match here in World of Warships. It's the title of the video says it all. Down three caps, three ships, and 300 points. Never fear, the Fletcher is here. Yes, that's right, in this battle, things are going to go horribly, horribly pear-shaped and almost go tits up pretty early on in the game. But that's why I'm here. That's the entire point of the Fletcher is to uh, get in back behind the enemy lines and start carrying and carrying hard. Though, I can't entirely blame my team for not pushing up because the enemy team played really really well in this match starting off the battle it's ice islands domination match mode three caps and i along with the majority of my team are headed up to the a capture point now this is important for a couple of reasons you see the enemy team is headed to all three capture points, and we have nobody going to C, so the enemy team is going to be able to completely take C totally uncontested. And as soon as they figure that out, we're going to be in a bit of a world of hurt. As we start approaching into the A cap point, our friendly destroyer up there has spotted their Benson and a plethora of enemy ships. I'm closing in, but I'm outside of torpedo range and trying to hit a destroyer with guns, especially from a US destroyer at these kind of ranges, is not going to happen. So I haven't been spotted yet. I'm going to close in and I'm going to try and get my torpedoes off. With any luck, that destroyer is just going to continue to sit inside that smoke screen and my torpedoes will hit him and cause some damage. I do love torpedoing destroyers in smoke. It's my favorite thing to do, but we have just lost our friendly destroyer. He has been killed by the enemy. So first blood goes to the enemy, and it looks like they are going to take A without contest. My division mate, Whiskey Ace, he's down in the B cap point in his Kagiro. He's pulled his 15 point Fubuki captain and put it on the Kagiro, so he's got a very, very sneaky boat. But he's going to, uh, well, he's going to get surrounded and then he's going to misplay it just a little bit. Right now, he's in a pretty good position. He's actually got two Bismarcks bearing down on him, but he's also got a Hatsaharu that's in the B cap and kind of holding on and contesting it. So seeing the situation over there and seeing that my div mate needs help, I am headed back that direction. I'm going to try and, well, help him capture B, maybe drive the enemy out so that we can get that cap point. Being down an enemy ship and a cap early on in the game and still having capped nothing and we're still not contesting anything means that the enemy team is going to get that early points lead, and usually a team that gets those early points leads ends up winning. My buddy has been spotted by the Hatsuharu, and I've got torpedoes out at this Bismarck. And I've got torpedoes out at this Bismarck, assuming because my buddy has been spotted and because he's got torpedoes headed towards that other Bismarck that this guy and the Bismarck I targeted, he's not going to turn because he doesn't expect there to be a destroyer off the other side with torpedoes coming at him. Whiskey is taking shots in from that Hatsaharu and those Bismarck's secondaries are just lethal. And sure enough, I was right that Bismarck did eat four of my torpedoes. I needed one more to secure the kill, but I wasn't able to get it. And he stopped the flooding and he's going to prepare. He's taking all sorts of nasty fire from that Hatsaharu and the Bismarck secondaries. As I put it, you basically got surrounded and yeah, it wasn't going to end well for you. 
He is gone and out of the battle, but he did at least manage to set that Hatsuharu on fire in four different places, and that's going to be a key factor later in this battle. Now, I'm in a bad situation. I have popped my smoke, opening fire on that Hatsuharu, taking all the secondary fire from both of these Bismarcks. I am outside of their hydroacoustic detection range, so I feel fairly confident that I can sit in this smoke. And my torpedoes are almost up, and I'm looking at that nice, big, juicy battleship. So if he continues to sail in this line, and I'm hoping he does, oh, but he is turning, he's turning broadside on, which means that by the time my torpedoes get there, they're going to miss him by at least a full ship length. Well, that's alright, I've got a second set of torpedoes, I fire them out based on his new lead indicator. But this guy, he's no fool. He's assuming that there's probably another set, and he's turned back, and he's just basically going to sail between my two spreads. He's closing in, and now I have no torpedoes to use. I'm guns blazing away, I'm trying to set him on fire once again. There is a friendly cruiser back up behind me, and I'm not really paying attention to the minimap and paying attention to him. And it actually surprises me, these torpedoes that come out of nowhere. I'm kind of wondering who did it. When I look at the minimap, there's nobody back over here. Well, it turns out that friendly cruiser got offed, but he did take out the Bismarck. Speaking of Bismarck, this other one is detecting me with his hydroacoustic. He's extremely low health, and he's about to get into a brawl situation with our Bismarck, who's in a better brawling situation. But this guy knows it, and he's going for the ram. Oh no! I am trying desperately to kill this Bismarck before he can ram our friendly ship, and I accidentally clip my enemy, or uh, my ally there, but we do manage to take that guy down just before he can get that ram in. Ramming denied, son. <laughs> we have uh, we've managed to save our teammate from a terrible, terrible fate. Looking at the situation, though, it's not good. We're contesting A, but the enemy has C and B. We are now down three ships, three caps, and 300 points. Time to activate carry mode. Looking at the map situation, I am going to go ahead and cap B. This is the best possible thing I can do. That Mahan popped up there for a split second, and I'm going to take a blind fire shot at him with my uh, torpedoes, and with any luck, I'll actually manage to hit him. However, this probably not going to be the case. Mahan's pretty maneuverable, and uh, even if he did sail on that line, he'll probably see them with enough time to activate his excellent sound system. However, the enemy Kagiro has popped up, and I am detected, so I'm going to go ahead and fire shots at him. Contemplated putting torpedoes out at him, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. Rather, save them than waste them. The Bismarck behind me is punishing him with his secondary batteries, and I am just going to continue punishing him with my main battery guns. He's on fire in multiple laces, he's been knocked out, he's got torpedoes away at that Bismarck, and he's dead. There is my first kill of the match, and now the Mahan has popped up! So, I think it's time to start nailing this Mahan. As I slow down here, contemplating whether or not I want to use smoke, but I kind of decide that I don't want to. And really, the reason that I've slowed down the way I did was to give time for those torpedoes to get past me so I could turn around and maneuver without fear of running into them. As I continue my turn, I get my guns turned around and I start firing at this Mahan who's closing the range. He is desperately trying to prevent us from capping and trying to reset, but what he needs to do is focus on that Bismarck who has most of the capture points. He keeps hitting me, but I don't have any of the capture points at this time. Mostly because he keeps hitting me. But his decision to close the range with a Fletcher is going to end badly for him. So I managed to kill him off, and we're going to capture B. Now those torpedoes that you just saw there on the edge of the screen, those are from the Hatsaharu. My buddy Whiskey is telling me that the Hatsaharu is up where, somewhere around those islands, based on where the torpedoes are coming from. Our Bismarck manages to 
dodge most of the Kagiro's torpedoes, but you'll see there in the distance that those torpedoes are still going, and they are actually going to hit his friendly ship. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Be careful who you torpedo, because you might hit your friendly. Though, this is one of those extreme situations that I kind of feel like, that's kind of the fault of the friendly ship, because they were at extreme range. You had more than enough time to see them coming towards you. Speaking of torpedoes coming towards you, there's the Hatsuharu's torpedoes. Given that most of the enemy team is still up at A, I want to sneak around behind these islands and try and get him from behind, and that's when the Hatsaharu pops up. So I am going to open up on him, and this is like the Hatsaharu's worst nightmare. Tier 9, Fletcher, with most of his health, pops up at 5 kilometers. Yeah, you're doomed. Finish off that kill on the Hatsaharu, and I kind of, I commented to Whiskey, I said, I stole your kill. Well, he says, no, no, it's totally your kill. I mean, I'm dead, so, yeah, this is true. You did die, but you did do most of the damage to him. So there's my third kill. So far, three kills, and all of them are from destroyers. Looking at the team situation, we finally managed to pull the scores back. Mainly in the respect that we've managed to kill more enemy ships. And... This is really what's keeping us alive in this game, because the enemy still has two caps. Now I'm going to head up here towards A, looking at the map situation. My team has got two battleships and a cruiser heading to C, and the only thing that's down at C is a Pepsi Cola. So I am definitely more needed up here at A, where the enemy is about to kill one of our battleships. Up here at A, there's an Amagi, there's a low health hipper that just popped up, an Udaloy and an Azumo. As I come around this island here, I fire off one set of torpedoes and pop my smoke at this Amagi, and I try and take a blind shot at that hipper, my main guns, kind of expecting where I think he's gonna be. He's so low health, I only need to hit him like twice, or hit him once and set him on fire. Backing up in my smoke, though, that Amagi knows there's a destroyer here. smoke's in front of him. He's managed to take one of my torpedoes, but I'm backing up. He's probably assuming that I'm going to be sitting forward in my smoke, waiting for him to get close enough. Instead, I'm backing up so I can spot him because he's not detected, and he's broadside onto me as he comes around that island because of it. I take fire in from his secondaries as I disappear back into my smoke screen, and I honestly don't think he was expecting me to pop out from behind my smoke screen as I hit him for three and secure my fourth kill. Four kills, and that Amagi was mostly full strength when I hit him, so that was a great kill for me. Now, the enemy team is down to three ships. They have an Azumo, a Hipper, who's mostly dead, and an Udaloy, who has popped up a few times, who's about four or 5,000 HP left, somewhere in between. I'm headed up to C, as, or I'm headed up to A, as my team is capping C, and they're capping uncontested. I know there's a Hipper back over here, so I've got all my guns pointed that direction. With any luck, I'll spot him. And sure enough, there he is, 2,000 HP. I only need to hit him once or twice with a full set. So I open fire. I'm going to risk it. That's when the Udaloy pops up, but he's not paying attention to me. I managed to hit that hipper for one salvo, almost kill him, and there's the kill. He misses me with his armor piercing and then crack and unleash. But now I have to fight this Udaloy who's popped up. He's very close range. I have a health advantage, and I have a maneuverability advantage and a firing advantage. But none of my shots are connecting early on, and this is a problem because it's giving this Udaloy plenty of opportunity to drop me down to his HP. But this salvo from me manages to kill him outright, and I survive with about 3,000 HP left. There's my Confederate medal and six kills, four of which are destroyers. <laughs> oh man, oh man. That that was a bit of a turnaround, and that was actually a really, really good turnaround. Six kills responsible for half of the enemy team's deaths. Capping out A, looking at the situation, they just have an Azumo left, and he is actually taking fire from an Iowa, 
He's being set on fire by an Otago and a Sims. And as I finish off capping A here, I'm kind of contemplating if I should head towards him and help out. I'm going to get my engine started, but it's not going to be the case. As by the time I can even get over there, he's going to burn to death or we're going to win on points. Now we have all three caps. Victory is assured. And... Speaking of victory, how did we do? Well, if we look at the post-battle results screen here, 490,000 credits earned, just shy of 500,000, 133,000 damage done, and 16,000 XP. The base XP, not my best in the world. This was part of the 3x XP weekend, and this was the first win of the day. Still, though, top of the team for XP earned well over 2,400 base, and a tidy sum to go with. All of it, well done. That's it for today's video. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more videos, how-tos, and let's plays with commentary. If you'd like to follow and like me on Facebook for semi-regular weekly updates of what's going on, feel free to do so. And if you'd like to help support my channel, please do so by visiting my Patreon. You can find the links for both of those in the description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.